Okay, good afternoon. Thank you for coming to, to my talk. I'm going to tell you something about how you can try to ge get Matplotlib a little bit faster. Maybe you remember my last year's talks about the GR framework, where I promised uh, that I had the intention to write a backend for Matplotlib for our software. And I made a promise to use our software in IPython notebooks. And these are the things which I want to introduce to you this afternoon. So I don't have to talk uh, about visualization needs. I think most of us have the, most, uh, have the same needs when it comes to the point that you want to make plots or diagrams. And, uh, but for our scientific world, we have some more requirements. For example, we need real-time graphics and we want, to, we want to visualize very large data sets and uh, that uh, might be challenging. So we began to think about another solution. And uh, there are a lot of visualization solutions in the Python world. Uh, the most popular ones are mentioned here on this slide. And I think uh, the basic workhorse which is also part of the scientific stack of, of, of Python is Matplotlib. And it has uh, some solutions where you can use Matplotlib output in the browser. Maybe you have heard this morning about the Bouquet uh, uh, software or Plotly, which are browser solutions which allow to redirect the Matplotlib output, output to a browser window. There are even other tools which make 3D graphics. They are very powerful, like Mayavi, BTK, or Wispy. But, uh, and they are very fast, and, but the problem is they are low level, and there are other problems. And uh, for example, in, in principle, you have three different things uh, you have to, which, which have to be mentioned. We need interoperability, speeds, and quality, and you can't have all of these three things. Uh, so we tried to get another solution. Uh, we wanted to, to combine the 2D and the 3D, the hardware accelerated 3D world, and we wanted to uh, create a backend which can not only produce figures, but also, also can stream data. Uh, so, this was our primary intention, and at that point, I started uh, to write um, a backend for Matplotlib uh, because I didn't know another method to, to get uh, all this graphics stuff faster. Scython didn't help. Uh, it doesn't make sense to, to uh, improve or speed up the numerical code segment. And uh, hardware acceleration is a very nice feature, but uh, in most cases, it cannot be applied to visualization software because you have your existing code and you want probably, probably to mix it with, with, with uh, other code uh, snippets. So there was the idea whether it would be possible to write a backend for Matplotlib, which would be faster. And as our software is completely written in C, it is uh, capable of presenting uh, continuous data streams and uh, with a module called uh, GR3, which has been written by a colleague of mine, which is also here in the audience, Florian Riem, we can also mix 2D and 3D graphics into one canvas or one window. There's one important point that uh, the software right now is also uh, interoperability, that there's interoperability with graphical user interfaces or web frameworks like IPython, or in the meantime, called Jupyter. So, what can we do with our framework? We can combine the power of Matplotlib and GR, so you can mix the output. For example, output where you uh, create uh, real-time plots of, of, of uh, signal analysis, or, or whatever, can, uh, whatever you can think of. And you can, for example, produce video content on the fly. You don't have to put your frames into PNGs and then put them together and, and render them as a, an MPEG file. You can do it on the fly. And one uh, important point is that you can really mix uh, 2D and 3D graphics elements. 
So how does this all work? Uh, I don't want to go into the detail because I want to show you some demos later. Uh, but uh, due to the layer structure of GR, which contains logical device drivers for nearly every technique uh, uh, we have today, uh, we, are, we are not, uh, there are, there's no dependency on third party software, so we can really mix uh, com components together and we have a very good uh, 3D uh, software which is capable of producing HTML5 uh, output and all these things. Uh, so this is the output of the Matplotlib GR backend. You can see that there's no difference to the, or the original output. The only uh, advantage is that it's a little bit faster. And uh, here you can see the GR framework in action. You can really produce a, a very fast output. For example, you can take an audio signal, calculate the Fourier transform of this audio signal and display it in real time. This is done in the middle section here. In the right section, you could see that you can produce a molecule, uh, you can, that, you, that you can visualize a molecule sequence, uh, while on the right side, uh, creating a, a histogram with matplotlib. So they can be combined in one plot and you don't have to change any line of code in your matplotlib uh, examples. So another feature I mentioned, right now you can use the GR framework in, in notebooks, for example in, in Jupyter, which is a follower of IPython. It can be used both with Python and Julia. Uh, I was very excited uh, about the performance, but I had uh, expectations and when I saw the first results, I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, you can see the left two bars that when using the GR backend, the performance improvement is only a factor two or three. I had expected much more because in the right bar, you can see that with a GR framework as a standalone software in, in Jupyter, you get much higher results. Uh, so we have to explain what, what's, what's the reason for that. And you can see in those codes, uh, in those log files here, which I have produced with a, with a Python profiler, that uh, Matplotlib is wasting too much time in Python itself. So uh, it doesn't send enough output to the graphics, uh, to the graphics backends, but uh, is uh, organizing plot data and, and uh, data files. So at this point, I was a little bit disappointed. And, uh, but then we had another new feature, the interoperabil interoperability. And on this slide, maybe it's a little bit too small, you can see uh, how you can mix different uh, code segments. I did not change any line in the matplotlib code in this example, and I did not change any line in the GR3 code. And I simply put them one after the other, and this can then be displayed as a sequence in, in, in one uh, canvas or in, in a web in one web canvas. There's another advantage. If you have such a sequence, you can create an MPEG file, for example, on the fly without uh, adding any animation code. If you know Matplotlib, you always have to, to, to define some animation functions and then create a loop and, and put your, your scenes together. That's not uh, required with this GR framework. So you have a big advantage uh, here. Also, it's possible to use inline graphics, both with matplotlib and GR. Uh, it's not a problem to produce inline figures with uh, matplotlib, but if it comes to the point that you want to generate streams, uh, it's much easier with a GR framework, and I will show you later how this works. Although I have to say that with the GR software itself, it's again 10 times faster than matplotlib. So at this point, I would like to show you some demos. 
So let's start with the animation example. Can you see? Okay, should be big enough. Okay, first of all, we define some NumPy array. Uh, we tell Matplotlib to use inline graphics and we create a figure which right now is empty and then we have to do an animation loop. We have to define animation function. Then we start the loop and at a, in the final step, we have to save this animation and this takes a lot of time. And once this is done, matplotlib will give us an MPEG file which can be displayed here in the browser by this HTML macro. Hopefully it will, okay, uh, okay, here it is. But we have seen it's a little bit complicated because we have to write this callback function, we have to write, we trigger this animation loop and all these things are not very comfortable because we have to write extra code. So let's try this with uh, the matplotlib backend. Unfortunately, I have to restart the kernel at this time because matplotlib only checks once whether there is an external backend uh, available, so I have to restart the kernel. I also have to redefine my NumPy arrays, and now I can tell Matplotlib to use the GR framework and gener generate a movie on the fly. Again, I import Matplotlib, I create the plot, and I can immediately show it. He has to render it like Matplotlib has to do it too, but we have seen we didn't, there was no need to write an, a callback function, an animation function. You could make the animation on the fly without any change of the Matplotlib code. So finally, let me show you how this works with G, the GR framework. We have a very simple loop. I also already told uh, the GR framework to generate inline graphics and as you can see here, there are only three lines of code and we have the same animation here. The speed is the same because the frame rate is set to the exact same value. So let's take another example. I want to show you that there are advantages concerning interoperability. In this example, uh, I use a matplotlib package to draw a histogram of some angles. I use a, a GR3 module called Mokli for molecular, molecular dynamics uh, visualizations to read and visualize a sequence of molecules. Then I add a 2D plot as shown in one of the earlier slides using GR. And uh, so let's look whether this works. Again, I use the matplotlib backend. I use a, 3D package Mokli to read the data file which contains the coordinates of the atoms. Then I use the GR framework and tell the GR framework to generate, to generate a movie on the fly and to postpone the, the, the output. That is important the Met, because Matplotlib should not create the output too early. So now we start the loop. This should take some time because we have to render about 100 scenes. Okay. Quite slow this afternoon. <laughs> okay, now we are done. And finally, we show what has been rendered. And here you can see we have both GR output, oh, I stopped it now. <laughs> GR output, we have matplotlib output, and we have uh, output from GR framework. I do it again so you can see what happens. And we have this line output on the bottom here. And all this is done in real time. It has been rendered in real time, and you can produce it uh, in, in your browser, okay? So there's one nice feature which I also want to show. You can export this scene from our GR3 software and then even rotate it in the browser. That's something which Florian has written and which we will 
probably make available for tool the graphics in the next release. So let's open the next one. I talked about inline graphics, so I have to speed up a little bit. Um, again, we read some data here, and you see that inline graphics with matplotlib is a little bit slow, and it's, it's flickering. And uh, there's a function I never knew about. It's called clear output, which is part of IPython, and you can use this function to recreate or redraw your plot. This is very useful for our scientists to generate sequences of plots in the browser. So I make the same now with GR, and you can see it's much faster and it's less code. So we have a speed up of 10 here, and you can even, okay, this was, you can even do this in JavaScript. So with the next version, we can create this output as a JavaScript HTML file, which can then be displayed in real time, which will be much faster than our own version. Uh, right now, we have finished writing a JavaScript driver, and with the next version, we will make it available uh, in the open source. So let's take the last example. This is an example taken from a SciPy talk from a Matplotlib guy, which has produced this graph here. And I just want to show that with our software, you can visualize this in real time, in 3D. It's flickering at this, this time, but uh, I have to mention that uh, all this data has to be transferred from the kernel to the browser and back again. So that's much traffic here. Maybe this demo makes no sense. I only want to show you that there's a lot of room for performance. OK, that's for the demos. So let's finalize. So I already mentioned that we are planning to make a Java, uh, that we have written a JavaScript logical device driver for our software which can then be used, for example, to embed JavaScript code in your Jupyter browser. Or you could uh, write your own uh, JavaScript code and take the and, and, and uh, visualize a display list which has been generated by, by our software, and then fill it uh, with your own JavaScript code. Here on the right side, you, you can see that they are nearly the same commands, or that are the same commands, which are used in, in uh, C or in, in Python or in Julia. OK, what can, can uh, GR else be used for? Uh, here are some examples. PyMolden is a new de uh, development of a colleague of mine, and which will be made uh, available for the open source world uh, very soon. And then we have Nikos, an instrument control system, which has been written by two colleagues of mine, which will uh, demonstrate it in the poster session tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and so, what are the conclusions? Uh, well, you can use uh, the Matplotlib backend uh, uh, as a GR uh, logical device driver, but the speed ups are not as expected. As it's mostly factor uh, times two or three faster. But uh, I think the, the second feature that you can mix uh, 2D and 3D graphics and that you can create movies on the fly is still something which could be interesting for, for most of you, especially for scientists. And you can produce plots and figures much faster with the GR framework. And that's the reason why we are really planning to write a complete Matplotlib implementation, PyLab implementation in C, because I think that's the future and uh, well, this is, these are our plans for the future, and I hope I can uh, fulfill my promises uh, next year and show you what we have done. So thank you for your attention. We have five minutes for questions, if you have any. So, is it a 
a quick question. Um, this seems quite popular in the scientific community, as you showed the PyMol uh, version. Yeah. Where, where else do you see this for non-scientific uh, community applications? Uh, they are not so much used than, for example, with Matplotlib. You can't compare those uh, software packages. Uh, the package itself is very old because it's C code. It has already written years ago. But now we are, have uh, written both for uh, backends, both for Julia and for, for, for Python, Matplotlib. And I think that it will be more popular in the near future because especially with Julia, you can get even more performance than I showed today. And uh, as Julia can call Python modules, it might be very uh, challenging. So I, th I hope that uh, there will be more users in the future. <laughs> Any other questions from the crowd? Okay, well, let's thank Joseph again for his presentation. Okay, okay.